Well, at least that makes it a little bit better. Good, good, cool. <laughs> so you don't start reading something? I'm here, sorry. All right, okay, we're good. Oh, yes, yeah, we fixed it. I just okay. gotta get back to the one. So there's no mouse or anything. So if we're, we're just gonna do this one for page down. Um, you'll do, once you're, in, once you're sharing the screen, you'll be able to use your right and left to click between it. So once you hit presentation mode, I'm not first. Yeah, so he'll so um, he'll have it in presentation mode, and you'll be able to just use the arrow keys to go between your slides. Okay. And then the not notes up will and down sideways. No, sideways, okay. and the notes will be here, and then your presentation will be on that screen. Got it. Okay.
All right, thank you everyone. We will go ahead and call the meeting to order at 204. Um, and if we can have Secretary Montoya do a roll call. Yes, thank you. Um, board Member Walsh, Board Member Bartholo. Here. And Chair Watts. Here. Just a reminder, uh, please, um, we're only using three microphones right now, and I think that if we could just mute the microphones when we're not using them, I know we're not used to this setup yet, so we'll probably have some technical difficulties today with us, but we'll, we'll try. Um, but I'd like to open it up for public comments uh, on non-agenda items. So if you'd like to make a comment via Zoom, please raise your hand. If you are dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Uh, Secretary Montoya, do we have any email, voicemail, or public comments that were received at this time? Um, we received no voicemails and no emails for public comment, and there are no virtual attendees raising their hand at this time. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we can then move to item 3.1. Director Burke, if you could introduce the item. Thank you, Chair Watts and members of the subcommittee. Item 3.1 is gonna be our Santa Rosa Water Fiscal Year 2023-24 Water, Wastewater and Stormwater and Creeks Budget Overview. And Nick Harvey, our Financial and Budget Analysis Manager, I hate that title, pardon me, uh, will be giving the presentation as well as Lori Urbanic, our Deputy Director of um, uh, Engineering Resources to cover the CIP portion. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. As Director Burke mentioned, my name is Nick. I'm a budget manager here with Santa Rosa Water. And today we're going to be going over the fiscal year 23-24 water, wastewater, and stormwater and creeks, O&M, and CIP budgets. So we'll start off today by going over our proposed water, local wastewater, and stormwater O&M budgets, and then take a look at our proposed CIP budget. We'll finish off by reviewing the rest of our fiscal year 23-24 budget schedule and requesting your formal recommendation of said budgets for consideration by the full board of public utilities. So our revenue assumptions for fiscal year 23 and 24 uh, include an anticipated increase in water delivery volumes of approximately 5%, which is based on historical information from previous years that we've had following drought years. We're expecting sewer use to remain essentially flat and development to remain stable. And per our currently adopted rate plan, we're implementing 3% and 2% rate increases for water rates and sewer rates, respectively. So here's a look at the O&M line items where we're seeing increases that are generally affecting the water, wastewater, and stormwater enterprises equally. Um, I'll discuss a few of these common items here and give more specifics on certain line items later in the presentation when we take a look at the fund specific impacts of the increases. So first off, I'd like to point out that city overhead and vehicle costs are not discretionary items for our department. Those costs are allocated out by the finance department for core city services and internal service funds. Uh, as such, we're absorbing increases here commensurate with other city departments. Uh, we have a 2.5% base salary increase across the board coming in July 2023 per our currently adopted MOUs. And the third item of note is given the uncertainty and speculation surrounding pop possible PG&E rate increases, our CFO and budget team have stipulated that all departments citywide are to increase planned electricity budgets by 15% over fiscal year 22-23 levels. With the understanding that if needed, a separate item will go to city council mid-year requesting an increase to appropriations due to PG&E rate impacts. So here's a high level glance at our anticipated O&M expenditure budget increases for the three enterprises under your consideration. As mentioned earlier, I'll point out a bit more of the specific detail on fund to fund impacts later on. But I thought this also serves as a good reminder of the funding mix involved when we discuss stormwater and creeks. So unlike the other enterprises under consideration, stormwater and creeks, as you can see there, um, as you all know, but as a reminder is uh, funded by the general fund 
uh, as a mix with the Stormwater and Creeks Enterprise, Enterprise Fund uh, revenues. So here's a graphical representation of the proposed water, wastewater, and stormwater budgets in aggregate for the next year. Uh, this is a great illustration of the relative impacts different line items in our budget have on our department as a whole. So here are the O&M expenditures by line item for the water fund. A quick glance at this chart clearly indicates that our largest year over year increase to water operating costs is the water purchase line item. That 16 and a half percent increase here. Um, I'm going to set that aside for now as I'll be discussing this in more detail on the next slide. Um, and we're increasing spending in the miscellaneous category due in large part to a recently adopted department policy of subsidizing certification costs for those who have such certifications as requirements of their positions. And although we're seeing a sharp increase in a couple line items, the net effect of those increases are being significantly mitigated by the large reduction in our budget request for O&M projects. So you can see the year-over-year -year delta on O&M projects is down 57 and a half, or 57 percent rather. And in spite of some of these larger increases, we're only seeing a 7.1 percent increase on the bottom line in aggregate. So back to the purchase of water item, uh, the two main factors affecting our water purchase budget are water delivery volumes and changes to the Sonoma water wholesale water rate. Sonoma water is putting forth a 10.56% 10 wholesale water rate increase for 23-24. And on top of that, we're also assuming a rebound in the volume of water deliveries about 5%. Those two factors together contribute to the purchase of water being our highest increase on our operating budget. So this graphic spells out just how significant our water purchase budget is in relation to water's O&M costs as a whole. This is a good representation of the impacts that uncontrollable costs have on our operating budget. Uh, so to illustrate, you know, water purchase budget is taking up a huge chunk here. And as you can see, uh, administrative and city overhead is taking up a pretty good chunk as well. So moving on to our local wastewater budget, the largest line item increase is miscellaneous expenditures at 17.5%. This is due primarily to the enterprise having 25 US, US 01 employees who all need certification next year. Significant reductions in other line items, however, result in the local wastewater only realizing a 1.6% net budget increase. Here's a graphic on the proposed O&M budget for the local wastewater. And here's a look at our reserve levels for each of the operating funds as of June 30th, 2022. Uh, we continue to see healthy undesignated reserve balances uh, in both water and local wastewater. And as a reminder, the operating reserves are uh, adjusted each year to 15% of actual O&M expenditures for that year. The catastrophic and rate stabilization reserves uh, have not changed in some time. We, we hold those st steady. So looking at the stormwater and creeks O&M line items, uh, overhead obviously sticks out with an almost 87% increase, or almost 88% increase, I should say. This is due to a one-time adjustment that was made last year. And as such, this isn't so much a budgetary increase as it is a return to normalcy with regard to that line item in the budget. They're also adding some debt service costs relating to the purchase of property for the Lower Colgan Creek Restoration Phase 3 project, which will be featured in the CIP portion of our presentation. And here's a chart summarizing Stormwater and Creek's proposed $3.3 million O&M budget for fiscal year 23-24. So I wanted to touch on the stormwater and creeks reserve balances since we spoke about it on the water side. They only carry undesignated fund balances uh, with water and wastewater being utilities with several stakeholders and outstanding debt issuances. There are several required reserves set aside in those operating funds that aren't required here. So this is a high level summary of what we're planning to invest in capital projects next year for the three enterprises that we're discussing today. Uh, we'll spend the rest of the CIP presentation, or the rest of this presentation rather, offering a more detailed look at our proposed CIP programming. 
Water is appropriating a little over 14 and a half million for projects next year. Uh, here we see the category breakdown by both percentage of the total as well as the dollar amounts. We're continuing to invest in our, our CIP dollars and key water delivery infrastructure and bolstering potential future groundwater supplies. On the local wastewater side, we're programming 13 and a half million for next year with the bulk of the funding being invested in our sewer trunk infrastructure, which has become more of a priority for us in recent years. And stormwater and creeks is programming a little over 1.6 million in CIP projects next year. A little under a quarter of their total CIP investment is going towards programmatic projects, which are crucial to the stormwater and creeks team. Uh, so that would be that first line item in the amount of $380,000. This investment is what gives them the agility to react to situations such as hazardous spills without causing major disruptions of the budget. The remainder of the funding is being invested among the four lower projects that you see on the slide there. Okay, so before we get into any project specifics, I wanted to give you a brief overview of how our CIP funding information is organized on the handouts you've been given. So in summary, uh, the area under the gray headers on the left-hand side of the document, uh, we can think of that in terms of summarizing all funding that has been given to these projects in the past and appropriations that currently exist today. So on the far left, you'll see the PID or contract numbers to each project followed by the five digit JL keys, which are the keys that actually hold budget in the city's ledger. As you move to the right, it shows you carryover from previous years, revisions, uh, year-to-date expenditures, encumbrances, and ends up on the far right-hand side with the total available balance as of today. Uh, the colored headers on the right-hand side of the sheet are what are the summarized funding for the next five years of the CIP program. Um, it's also important to note that for any given year, we're only really looking at year one in terms of your recommendation and approval as we only appropriate CIP one year at a time, uh, but we like to include five years for planning purposes. Uh, one final note is the funding type column. There's four funding types, and those can be defined as new projects. Those are projects that have never had funding before, and they're receiving projects for the first time within the five-year CIP plan. There's carryover projects, which represent pro projects that have uh, existing appropriations and are not, or are not receiving further appropriations in the five-year plan. There's continuing projects that are projects that already have appropriations and are receiving further appropriations in the five-year funding plan. And then there's canceled projects and those projects represent those that we expect to be complete before the end of this fiscal year or have otherwise been um, reprioritized or deprioritized. And with that, I'm ha happy to hand it over to Lori Urbanek, Deputy Director of Engineering Resources with Santa Rosa Water, who's gonna walk you through some specifics and highlights of our CIP program. Uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, I'm Lori Urbanek, Deputy Director of Water Resources, and I'm here to give you just a couple of highlights of the CIP program this year. So the first project is a, it's a, a water and sewer project and we've broken it up by the different funds. So this is the water component. It's just a, a, a neighborhood street with um, like low, excuse me, with um, small diameter water mains and sewer mains. And so this one is just upsizing from a six inch water main to an eight inch. And the estimate for this project for just the water side, the water fund, is $850,000 and we expect to start design and have construction year two. We're also putting money into the groundwater program. Um, this is the LEAT well rehabilitation and um, it's to provide emergency water as outlined in the groundwater master plan. Um, we've recently done some testing with our consultant who's looking at um, really what level of detail that we need to replace if we need to replace the well casing or the screen. And so that work is still ongoing. 
And then another one of our uh, critical, two of our critical pump stations are also being uh, given upgrades to increase fire flow up in the Wooey area, um, pump station 10, <clears throat> excuse me, will install um, an additional third pump and um, expand the, the house, the, they call it a pump house. Um, I'd call it the structure, but that's how we have it. And the next one is uh, station 14, and it is uh, installing a new capacity uh, pumps out in the Oakmont area. And then station four on, out there on farmers. Um, right now we're, we're going, we're evaluating some, a lot of elements that need to be fixed out at the station. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this project is going to evaluate the operational needs and perform some uh, re of the facility and then look at what kind of rehabilitation we need to do and identify the work. Um, excuse me, whoops. Um, anyway, the, the decisions will be made at a later date after we receive the full analysis on the report. And here is uh, Sewer Main. This is the counterpart to the first project I talked about on Salem Avenue and Clement. And the sewer estimate is slightly larger and it'll come in at almost a million dollars. Again, design will occur simultaneously with the water and construction hopefully will start in year two. The trunk lines are one of our biggest components in this year's uh, program and ongoing. They are in desperate need of rehabilitation. And as some of you probably know, their um, reinforced concrete pipe is the majority of them. And they're um, seeing a lot of internal corrosion. So this, there's an error on this slide I have to point out. Um, this says the project total estimate is 4 million. Actually, that, that is the year one funding and the total project is estimated at a little over $14 million. So that's just year one funding. But this, um, this sewer trunk will be um, lined with a liner and it will certainly improve. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong, wrong, wrong trunk here. <laughs> My apologies. Um, this is the Los Alamos trunk. And yes, the error is still correct. But this is a, a replacement project for an additional capacity. And um, we're hoping that this uh, is getting close to being put out to bid, or it might be out to bid already, and uh, start construction this spring, late fall. Um, along with the trunks that are getting rehabbed and replaced, um, we're also um, looking at the sewer siphons. Um, those of you who aren't familiar with the siphons, they're in um, our trunk lines typically where they go under creeks. And so on the upstream side, we have a, um, usually it dives under the creek. And so this project is going to line some of those. And then we're also going to install grit traps on the upstream side. Um, those grit traps will have sediments and rocks and debris fall out. So it makes it much easier for operation staff to clean. Um, this is another large uh, sewer project and it's at, estimated at $7.5 million. Um, again, we're hoping to start the design in year one and construction, as you can see, it's all over town. So we anticipate it'll take two seasons to complete the construction. And here's another lining out on the Robles trunk. This is a continuing project. Um, year one is design and we're looking at 5.3 as a total project estimate. Again, these sewer trunk lines have a lot of internal corrosion and this will line it and rehabilitate the project. And here we have um, a highlight of one of our creek projects. This happens to be phase three of a really awesome project that we've done a lot of creek restoration thanks to our stormwater folks. Um, this project's been around for a long time and not only is it a restoration, but it's also increasing flood capacity from 25 to the 100 year flood event. 
and constructs a lot of natural um, uh, paved bikeways and pedestrian pathways and a bridge. And also a thing that we love is it's got $5.8 million worth of grant funding. And with that, that completes my presentation on the CIP and I'll turn it back over to Nick. And here's a, here's a quick overview of what the remainder of our annual budget schedule looks like. Uh, we're gonna be before the full board this Thursday, the 16th with Sonoma Water's proposed rate increase. We'll be back before the full board twice in April with a budget study session, as well as request for the board to recommend the water department budgets and regional partner allocations to city council. And we'll be requesting council's approval of the preliminary regional budget on April 25th. And we'll finish out the budget cycle with study sessions on May 8th and 9th and formal budget adoption scheduled to take place on June 20th. And with that, uh, we can open it up to any questions you might have. Great, thank you very much for the presentation. I will now open it up for board member questions or comments. Any questions, comments? I appreciate the presentation. Great job and uh <laughs> Thank you. I just had a couple questions. Um go back to my notes. Uh, one thing kind of towards the beginning of the presentation, you mentioned just the cost of pg e increases. Uh, but then when I looked at some of the line items, it looked like the utility costs had uh, was budgeted as a, a decrease from the previous year. I just wanted to know if you could explain that a little bit. Yeah, so so what happened was a while back, the budget team, we were speaking to the budget team about our pg e uh, cost estimates. And they had said, hey, let's go with uh, 15 percent above the 22-23 adopted budget but what happened was when Kimberly and I dove into the local budgets um, they actually had some pretty sharp increases uh, for 22-23 uh, in reaction to the actual cost from 21-22 and so for those especially on the local enterprises that being water and local wastewater um, we looked at what they were trending on for this year and made sure that they had enough budget to absorb the actual costs. Uh, so what happened was 22-23 was budgeted pretty heavy. And so we did some more analysis to peel that back a bit. And as you might imagine, the bulk of our electricity usage is actually consumed out at the plant. And you will see the effects of that in our next presentation. Thank you, that, that makes complete sense. Um, and just wanted to say, I really appreciate the overview of the CIP. It's always nice to, um, get a visualization of where these projects are happening and, and also um, happy to see the continuation of more uh, funding towards groundwater. And I know that former board member Dowd would be, would be uh, asking for that repeatedly. So I feel like we have to, have to continue to his legacy and make sure that's addressed. So thank you very much for all of that. Board member. Thank you. Um, when you were talking about stormwater, you said that um, the, the increase in the budget of 87.6% that came under internal and external overhead was reflected a return to normal? Yes. I'm not sure what that means. Is that like before COVID? Like what's the return to normal? The so basically what happened was we, we discovered in reviewing last year's activity that they were mistakenly undercharged uh, their fair share of the allocation. And so what's showing as, and we did some work to true that up in the financials for 21, 22 actuals. And so what you're seeing is actually a massive increase is actually just to return to normal. So it, it looks like a huge spike, but that's just uh, based on the budgetary changes. Um, so last year it was under budgeted and under charge. This year we're budgeting back to normal. More 
All right, well, then we will open it up for public comment on item 3.1. So if you are in the room, uh, please go to the microphone, or if you'd wish to make a comment via Zoom, please raise your hand. And if you are dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Secretary Montoya, do we have any email, voicemail, or public comments that were received? Um, we have no email or voicemail public comments received, and um, no hands are raised on Zoom for public comment. Great, thank you. There's a lot of ways to make public comment now, so I apologize for <laughs> if I missed any. All right, so. Um, Chair Watts, if I may, I just want to make sure anyone in the room can comment as well, so if you do want to comment, just raise your hand if you'd like. So. You have the in person also. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it, I don't think we need to take um, a motion or seconds already on the table. So just do, uh, uh, we have to take a motion. So if the subcommittee is comfortable, um, we are more than happy to ask you all to recommend. Um, so you'd need a motion in a second. If there's additional information the subcommittee would like, we can always come back a, and schedule another budget subcommittee meeting. But um, this, we now have all the details and we've provided them to you today. And so our, um, our recommendation from staff is that the budget, the subcommittee consider this budget and make a recommendation to the board. Great. Thank you. So I will entertain a motion if one is ready. Uh, I will move uh, to, <clears throat> pardon me, pardon me, that uh, we approve the fiscal year 2023-24 water fund, local wastewater fund, and stormwater and creeks enterprise operations and maintenance and capital expenditure appropriation requests. I second that motion. Thank you. We have a motion in a second. And Secretary Montoya, can we get a roll call vote? Um, board Member Walsh. Aye. Uh, board member Barthelow? Aye. And Chair Watts? Aye. And that passes unanimously. Thank you so much for your presentation. And now we can move to item 3.2. Director Burke, if you would like to introduce that item. Thank you, uh, Chair Watts and members of the subcommittee. Item 3.2 is going to be our Santa Rosa Water Fiscal Year 2023-24 Regional Budget Overview and we will have these same presenters as before. Um, uh, Chair, Chair Watts, um, I am, before we discuss this budget I'd, or this agenda item, I'm going to recuse myself from participating um, because I want to avoid any actual or perceived conflicts. Um, I work for the Farm Bureau, as I think all of you know, and um, you know, we, we advocate on behalf of our members and there is, you know, that some of our members actually um, contract with Santa Rosa Water for delivery of recycled water. So um, out of an abundance of caution, I'm going to recuse myself from this conversation. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much for letting us know. And we still have quorum, so we can continue moving forward with this item. Budget. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Okay, and with that, we will take a look at the fiscal year 23-24 regional O&M and CIP budgets. So today we'll be taking a look at the proposed regional budget for fiscal year 23-24. And I'll start with an, a look at the O&M budget, then I'll go over the proposed partner agency allocations and CIP specific to our regional system and finish up with a request for your formal recommendation of the budget for consideration by the full Board of Public Utilities. So the same general O&M increases discussed for our other enterprise funds are impacting the regional operating budget. However, the effects of these, the increases for chemicals and electricity are more pronounced for the regional operations at, at the treatment plant, sorry, as the treatment plant is our department's largest consumer of both chemicals and electricity. We'll discuss these items in more detail during our look at the line item budget. So the treatment plan is our largest consumer of electricity. We have budgeted for an over 36% increase in electrical costs. There are two main factors driving that increase. One is the aforementioned 15% uh, 
budgeting over 15% over 22, 23 electrical budgets for PG&E rate increases as directed by our CFO. And in addition to the 15%, we're also expecting an increase in the volume of electricity actually consumed at the plant. So that's why you're seeing a number that's so much larger than 15. We're seeing an increase in projected miscellaneous costs due to our recently implemented policy of subsidizing training and certifications for those who have job specific requirements for such. And the increase in operational supplies is primarily driven by increased chemical costs at the plant. Uh, sodium hypochlorite and alum prices in particular are expected to increase in costs next year due to increased demand as well as anticipated market and supply chain volatility. And as a reminder, IT, insurance, overhead, and vehicle costs are assigned by finance, and our regional operation is absorbing similar increases in these costs as all other departments citywide. In spite of those increases, however, the reduction in our proposed O&M project budget is keeping the aggregate increase to the fund at just 8%. Here's a chart reflecting the entirety of regional's proposed budget for next year, including CIP and debt service appropriations. We also like to include the miscellaneous revenue figure in red at the top, that $5.3 million figure, uh, which serves as a reminder that we always bu budget our partner out agency allocations net of that figure. So we take every cost, subtract out what we're budgeting for miscellaneous revenues, and we bill that net amount and allocate it accordingly to our regional partners. So here's a look at our regional reserve levels as of June 30th, 2022. Uh, we're continuing to hold the operating reserve at 15% of actual operating costs. Uh, you'll notice that we don't have an undesignated reserve balance as we have in other operating funds in the water department. As a reminder, any excess reserves in regional are held in a refund reserve on behalf of our partner agencies and are applied to partner allocations as requested for rate smoothing purposes. So here's a summary of that refund reserve balances of June 30th, 2022, as allocated to each partner agency. So we have a total of just over $2.6 million in the regional refund reserve uh, held and it's broken out by agency in the different columns here. So now we'll take a look at our proposed partner, alloc partner agency allocations for 23, 24. Each agency has allocated their pro rata share of budgeted O&M, CIP, and debt service costs. Those totals are then aggregated into the total allocation for next year and then compared to the previous year's allocation for the purposes of expressing the percentage increase for the year. So I spoke briefly about the purpose of our agency refund reserve, and here's a perfect example of how it benefits our partner agencies. So as you can see here, Sebastopol has chosen to apply $200,000 of their reserve balance in the applied fund balance column. And that's keeping their effective year-over-year -year increase to just under 2.5%. So about 2.3%. Absent that refund application, uh, it would have been much higher. So that is a, a great illustration of how that reserve works and how our partner agencies benefit from it. So here's the breakdown by category of our proposed $10 million CIP budget for the regional enterprise. The majority of our funding is being invested directly into the improvement of our plant and geysers infrastructure with the remaining, with the remainder supporting ongoing planning efforts. With that, I'm now going to hand it over to Lori Urbanic, Deputy Director of Engineering Services to speak about some of the specifics of our regional, proposed regional CIP budget. Uh, thank you, Nick, and everybody. So the first project that we're going to highlight out at the plant is the replacement of the um, LTP filter valve replacement. This is phase two. It's highlighted here on the slide in red, and um, it replaces the cells nine through 14, a bank of those. And the total project is estimated at about uh, $1.4 million, and we expect design and construction um, in year one, since the project is ready to go to bid now. That's always exciting. And the second project out at the plant is the um, 
did that not advance? Let's see what's going on here. Oops. Clearly I'm having issues with the slide deck today. My apologies. So the second um, highlighted project is the um, aeration basin improvements. And this will replace the low pressure pipes, fittings and valves and refurbish the channels. Um, we're expecting the design to take year one and year two. And the total estimate on that project is um, $2.3 million. Um, a significant portion of work on this project will be um, just keeping the bypass pumping going as we move through the project area and diverting flow. We expect um, to be in construction in year three. And we have a project out at uh, Geysers Infrastructure. Um, seems like we just built it to some, but it's now approaching 20 years old and um, we need to keep this critical infrastructure going. So this project is gonna um, upgrade some pumps and BFDs out there and um, those should be replaced about every 10 years. So we wanna keep up with that maintenance and replacement. Um, the project, this, this first phase, the initial will be a design um, assessment and condition assessment and design, and that will be year one. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Nick to talk about the remaining schedule. Okay, so here's the remainder of our budget schedule for the year. Uh, we'll be bringing the budget before the full board on April 6th in our study session. We'll follow that up on the 20th with a request to the full board to recommend the preliminary regional budget and allocations to city council. We'll then be asking city council to approve the preliminary regional budget and allocations for the purposes of notifying our partner agencies of their allocations, uh, which we like to do at, uh, by May 1st of each fiscal year or each calendar year, I should say. And co council study sessions are May 8th and 9th with formal adoption plan for 20th, June 20th rather. And with that, we are available to field any questions you may have on the regional budget. Great, thank you very much. Do we have any board member questions? Um, we, we do see a, a reduction in the O&M uh, budget for re repair and maintenance is, is there a impact expected from that reduction in, in the operating budget no i think the the biggest impact is that because we have so many funds built up in those projects which don't release their budget at the end of the year um we're seeing that benefit us greatly this year because we're not having to budget for those projects as a function of their carryover budget so you know, absent that, we'd have to increase our investment. But since we put so much money there last year and it's carrying over, it's giving us a reprieve this year with the carryover budget. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I have no um, questions at this time. Um, very clear presentation. Um, thank you. So now we will open uh, for public comments on item 3.2. If you are in person, you can go to the microphone. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please raise your hand. And if you're dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Secretary Matoya, do we have any person email or voicemail public comment? Um, we have no in-person comments, um, no hands raised on Zoom at this time. And we also received no voicemail or phone, voicemail or email public comments, sorry. Great, thank you. With that, I will um, entertain a motion for the recommendation. I'd like to make a motion. Yes. I move that the uh, uh, budget subcommittee recommend to the full Board of Public Utilities approval of the fiscal year 2023-2004 regional operations and maintenance and capital expenditure appropriation requests. I will second that. Uh, Secretary Montoya, can we get a roll call vote? Yes, um, board member Walsh. Aye. Um, and Chair Watts. Aye. Okay, and that passes with two affirmative votes with board member Barcolo recusing. Well, thank you very much. This was quite an efficient budget season for the budget subcommittee. So that's greatly appreciated. I know staff's work is what really led that to be as efficient as it was. 
Um, and so with that, I guess we will adjourn the meeting and see some of you the rest on Thursday. Thank you.